Welcome to a new episode of Zero Cafe. I'm Guido Janssen and guess what? After a long hiatus, I am back with some new episodes that you don't want to miss. It's been a while, but just like a superhero returning from a secret mission, I'm ready to dive back in the world of CRO. Are you guys still calling it that? I don't know. Uh, anyway, next week I am visiting the Growth Marketing Summit in Frankfurt where a hand-selected lineup of optimizers will take the stage and inspire you with their raw knowledge. And I am the lucky bastard that was asked by the organization to interview all these experts from the stage and the audience in our own Zero Cafe podcast booth on the exhibitor's floor. So naturally, on today's episode, I have Andre and Julia, the masterminds behind this event, to talk about growth, the mind, and superheroes. So welcome back, and let's get started with my first question to Julia about how this event actually got started. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, I just thought about that because I came in here now and uh, took took over the event from Andre this year to to take care of everything. And then I looked back and thought, oh, he initiated this in 2010. And then I asked, I remember, Andre, I asked you, why did you do that? And what was like the the main idea of doing an event like this? And you said... You know, initially we just wanted to bring together optimizers to connect, to network with. We had some clients um, that just wanted to exchange ideas and talk about challenges they are facing. So in 2010, um, Andre came up with the Conversion Summit. And Andre, if I'm right, there was like a two-day event, right, with a boot camp, workshop, um, and bringing together already 200 people at that time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. We we wanted to do a combination of conference and uh, bar camp. Back then, bar camps were very famous. And that's maybe an unhappy anecdote. We called it conversion camp uh, for the very first edition. And we did not know that the Catholic Church in the U.S. was doing something they called conversion camp, which was to uh, convert uh, gay people into straight people, which is horrible, horrible idea. We did not know that something stupid like this even exists, but that was feedback from people in the US. So I heard conversion. similar feedback when uh, when Tom yeah. organizes the conversion hotel in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, the Americans were thinking, "What is this going on? What? What? Who's converting? What?" <laughs> so yeah. no. It, um, so, so we quickly renamed it. We yeah. quickly renamed it to Conversion Summit because our idea was of a summit is like we wanted to have the best people together. Uh, back then, I was already traveling around the world giving speeches at conferences, and I saw there's a huge gap between uh, the brightest people doing the best talks and the lesser. Good talk. So my, my <clears throat> basically my strategy was I create like a hand picked lineup of the best people I meet during the year. So you don't have to travel around. Um, so basically, you brought your little notebook. Right yeah. now, oh, this is a good speaker, this is a good speaker, this and is a nice topic. Approach the people directly. So I, I, my value proposition back then was you don't need to travel to five or six different conferences. I already handpicked the, <laughs> the best people for you. Yeah. Uh, so How did you get to growth marketing soon? Yeah, we, I mean, we were talking about this at the beginning. C CRO is dead, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> Some people say. <laughs> conversion. We, I mean, quickly you realize that conversion rate is a stupid metric to focus your experiments on. So, uh, Or maybe not the best in all cases. Um, so, um, yeah, we, wouldn't, we, we didn't want to have it in that kind of niche. We, we thought conversion rate optimization is too narrow. Or you could even go go back to landing page optimization. What if, I mean, there was a time back in 2008, I think Tim Ash published his book called Landing Page Optimization. That was a huge thing back then. So meaning you only optimize the landing pages and the rest doesn't matter. What a stupid idea. No, it's where people start. So I think there was this time of landing page optimization, A-B testing. Then it uh, kind of submerged into conversion rate optimization. That was a time we call it conversion uh, summit. But we quickly realized you, it's about experimentation and, and um, customer experience optimization and these topics. And, and they are basically there for, for growth. So we thought about calling it Growth Summit, but then, yeah, we, we found the name Growth Marketing Summit interesting, so that's how we ended up with that name. We always wanted to find a name that, yeah, clarifies what we stand for. Just to add something to that, it's also that the audience profile changed a bit, you know, because we noticed that. Ah, interesting. Um, 
more people from like areas like product management are interested in this um, in this topic as well and join the the summit. So we see more product owners, product managers coming to our uh, event, UX designers. So it was quite a broad audience. Um, whereas in the beginning, I think Andre, it was really like the pure CRO people. And then like we broadened it up, and so we had to change the name to also make sure people understand it's really about something more holistically called growth. Yeah. And then the question, of course, becomes, is, is Growth Marketing Summit still a good name? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that Im Im implies what this uh, podcast is already called, Growth-Minded Superheroes, and, th and the answer is no. I, um, growth Marketing implies this is for all the people that work for marketing, inside marketing, together with marketing, but the world is changing, and maybe this represents the maturity I just talked about, landing page optimization, conversion rate optimization, then we call it experimentation, and more and more teams are getting involved. So uh, now we realize uh, growth is a discipline for all teams, and we don't want to um, still have kind of a focus uh, like, like marketing. So how do we get rid of the marketing term? It's still also for marketing people, it's for product people, for everyone. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is, uh, yeah, actually uh, what, what Julia came up with, uh, an idea I really like and I really support is uh, renaming it to Growth-Minded Superheroes because everybody who comes to this conference uh, is a superhero because these are people that care, that want to learn more, that want to raise a maturity. These are the, the fighters for the truth inside each company. We want to support them. We want to make them uh, the superheroes of our conference. So we, we, we will call it growth-minded superheroes in future. Nice. It also exemplifies what we stand for as a, as a community with a growing, evolving. And yeah, sometimes the names need to change because uh, audience changes, reality changes. So, uh, Julia, I'm, I'm now, of course, very curious. Does, does it only uh, imply a name change or what, what else is going to change this year? Ah, I don't want to uh, tell too much. So not, not too to many spoilers, but just some hints. It would be yeah. nice. <laughs> not spoiling too much. Um, no, I mean, in the end, just to add to Andre's point, what was important also by changing the name is for us, um, uh, because it's, it's all about the community. It's about the people. You know, we noticed over the years that what makes the event so special is, of course, on the one hand side, the hand-selected lineup of speakers that Andre is always selecting um, to have the best and um, yeah most relevant topics on stage. But then it's all about the attendees because we have such a strong community of people, a lot of people coming back, growing. So we are each year we are growing the community and the networking aspect of the conference is so important. And that's why we thought we need to put in the middle of everything the people. So that's why we want to call it superheroes, because it's about the people, about the superheroes that make the event so special. And then about your question, what will be changed? Yeah, of course, there will be a few surprises. Um, but yeah, I don't want to spoil it too much. So people should experience it themselves. Um, we always try to improve. We always try to optimize the conference. And what Andre and I did uh, was talking to a lot of attendees from last year to get some feedback, to optimize the event itself and to put this feedback into the event. And I really hope that this worked out. So the biggest complaint last year was this fresh fruit, 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 sorry, fresh fruit was missing for okay. the breakfast. Okay. <laughs> if this okay. is the biggest complaint well sounds like we a great event happy. that's the biggest complaint <laughs> yes <laughs> no, but, exactly that's uh, the what, biggest what, complaint yeah <laughs> what changed is that we increase the possibilities to network with others and it sounds maybe um, unconvenient for introverted people but we make it as convenient as possible because I think um, you have the possibility to talk to a couple of hundred people there who do uh, or who did maybe on average a couple of dozen or hundred experiments so you can learn so much by talking to other attendees and we, t we try to make that as easy and convenient for everyone even the introverts who say well I, I don't want to talk to other people no problem come to Growth Marketing Summit and experience it. <laughs> Are there any uh, particular topics or speakers that you're looking forward to, to this year or th that you personally think, hey, this is going to be a really important topic um, looking out for the next five years in 
zero mm. or growth. Um, uh, what's going to be really important for people uh, to listen to or to think about? It's a tough question because, um, as I said, all the speeches are kind of handpicked, and I'm looking forward to each of them. It's always surprising that finally it turns out different compared to what you had in mind. So, But what I am looking forward to is a speech that we never had um, before. Uh, and it's a talk from my colleagues, from two colleagues of Konversionskraft, both coming from a product organization um, and talking about the pain they experienced inside product organizations and how to solve it. And that was their motivation to switch into uh, CRO <laughs> or experimentation uh, and optimization and, and now they see the benefits that the two worlds could have from each other and it's it's a speech that is all about uh, closing the the gap bridging the worlds together so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one although it's from our own team it's 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 a tough one for our people you know they know uh, that there are many well experienced speakers so there's a high yeah, no pressure benchmark <laughs> yeah no pressure but could you please talk about this and that so no i i i um have a lot of respect for uh our colleagues that also take the stage there yeah and uh julia talking about um uh, going out there um uh, especially after COVID, everyone's used to working remotely now. And there's a lot of um, online conferences, uh, webinars that we can uh, follow. So why do we still need to go to an, uh, to an offline conference? Why do we still need to travel? Why is that still important? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we were a bit scared after COVID um, if people would really come back to the event because everyone was afraid. And then we noticed people loved that, you know, they, they really needed, um, the exchange with others, the networking and the, the personal exchange and not only talking online. Um, and that's why we see the growing numbers also of attendees um, joining. And we are convinced that it's so valuable to be there, to have the time uh, also at the get together in the evening, you know, that gives space that you would never have in an online meeting to discuss things very personally. Um, and that's why I'm totally convinced that events will, uh, will be very important also in the future. People are social. Uh, pe I mean, people are social. Period. Right. The so social interactions. All, even for introverted people, they need social interactions, and this is why we think Growth Marketing Summit is an experience, including the networking breaks and the coffee breaks, and the, we, we we will have some activities where people can participate in everything we have the uh, the the uh, networking reception after the conference uh because yeah speaking with other people is so valuable some people say well this is even more valuable than the speeches speeches they, they were inspiring but yeah connecting to like-minded people people who are in a different uh, or similar situation uh learning from them, from the coming from different companies, but being in a similar dis situation, that's so valuable. So you, you can't do that online. It I won't mean, work. Talking as, as, as someone that's leaning toward the, in, towards the introverted uh, side, I mean, I started mm. the podcast to still talk to mm -hmm. people, uh, mm -hmm. but, but uh, still going to, to uh, offline events. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think after COVID, it even gives some extra energy because people are at home all the time now. It's right. extra special to go to it. There's, there's more intent behind it. There's more... Yeah. Uh, energy uh, to go into such an event to yeah. make it even more special, uh, yeah. and then you can go rest at home again. That's fine. That's also good. That's nice. But yeah. the, the 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 meaning of uh, of everyone <laughs> that you're already talking to to a screen all day, it's very yeah. nice to do that uh, in real life. And as Andre already said. We wanted to make it as easy as possible also for the introverted to connect with each other, you know? I mean, you don't have to talk to each other, of course, but so you're not forced, but we will make it as easy as possible, for example, by providing for the first time an event app this year that also oh, allows okay. you know, to connect easier with people, to set tags for topics that you are interested in, that you want to learn more about, and to find the right people to match, you know? So I think that's also something that will really <laughs> reveal, <laughs> yeah, make a difference this year. And uh, as, as, a, as a final question uh, for you, uh, as a visitor, how can I get the most out of, out of the events? Should I bring certain things? Uh, do I need to prepare something? What do I need to do? How can I make this the best event of the year for me? Well, um, <laughs> um, 
how should you prepare? That's a good question. I mean, basically, you you, you don't we need, need to, to prepare? prepare anything. No, to just be there. No. So uh, be be open minded. Would... You know, I exactly. <laughs> That would have been my answer. Just be open-minded, go there with like a positive attitude and just think, okay, you can learn. You will definitely take something from here. If it's from the talk, if it's from the networking, just be open, talk to people and use the opportunity that it gives. Um, the only thing that I would say is now that I talked about the app, download the app like a few days before, you know, set up your profile, uh, set up the tags and things you're interested in to connect easier. Um, you won't miss a talk as we only have the single stream. That's also different from other conferences where you have to pick topics in an, and then you have this uh, FOMO and think, oh my God, I need to attend this. Oh no, I want to attend this. But you have the single stream, uh, st single track conference where you can't miss a thing. Um, that's also important for me. But other than that, yeah. Just enjoy. Be present. <laughs> yeah, you, it, it, uh, it's not that often that I'm speechless, but th this time you caught me. Uh, I have no idea how you could prepare for, for the, uh, attending the conference, but I have one answer to that question as well. You know, uh, what, because what I observe is people sitting in their companies, talking to their colleagues, and I would call it being trapped in their bubble. Everybody is trapped in their job bubble. And... Many times you think, well, am I the only one that needs to convince their bosses to do X, Y, Z, whatever? Uh, am I the only one that has a lack of resources here? Am I the only one that thinks I'm fighting against whatever? And I think this is uh, something you will learn uh, when you, you come to uh, uh, GMS, right? That there are people that have the same bubble, in different companies. And that, that's what I mean when, when I say the only thing uh, you need uh, is, is be a little bit open-minded because you can learn from these people. They might have solved uh, some things that, that you still uh, need to solve. And also regarding the, the, the different names and, and the, the history we have, what we went through, you will see people that already are in a different stage. Well, we now have product teams and we want to make them experimentation ready. Uh, while you are still in a center of excellence and you try to, to have a centralized approach and you still remember how it was when you were the only team that did A-B tests and whatever. So you will be helpful for everyone else that, that has a, a, a different maturity. You can learn from each other. Um, because you maybe solved some of the hurdles already to move forward. And so that's the only thing you need. Be open-minded. Listen to the stories of other people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at, at minimum, you can just give each other a hug or cry together <laughs> because you have the same problems. But, yeah. but more, more likely, you will be able to solve your problems by talking to, uh, to other people, people and, and sharing yeah, exactly. uh, I would say the, that's the challenges that you have. That's the value proposition. Uh, the, the whole community of Growth Marketing Summit attendees is maybe uh, the, 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 the biggest walking asset, the biggest database of knowledge and experience that you can find uh, in the world. You, you won't find another place where you have that many people. For the real networking, that happens in between. And that's the way you talk to your peers about, hey, I have the same issue or I solve this in this way. Mm -hmm. And... Um, of course, at the networking uh, and, and uh, the get-together after the event. Uh, and maybe yeah. during breakfast, we have some nice fruit. Fruit, yeah. That, that's, that's, when something, that's something we really improved. And I, I think that will raise our NPS uh, <laughs> to astronomical heights. <laughs> we ordered so Who many knew? bananas. And you can't imagine. I have so many bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? No, number one tip in organizing a conference in 2024 bring bring fruit and lots of it <laughs> awesome yeah that's true awesome so um yeah for everyone uh june 19th in frankfurt book your tickets if you don't have them yet go to um growthmarketingsummit.com and we'll all be joining uh, some fresh fruits uh, together then thanks yeah that's what we will do yeah. thank you julia thanks andre thanks Looking and uh, see you there you. thank bye. you see you in june yeah bye bye